Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome, this is the Global Community for Adult Survivors of Complex Trauma. Um, you're living with complex trauma or uh, symptoms of CPTSD as a result of adverse childhood experiences, abuse, and now here you are. You're an adult and you're wondering, what's going on? Why am I still struggling with, with life and things as a result of things that went on a long time ago? I'm an adult. Why do these things from childhood still continue to bother me? If that is you, you're in the right place. We have all been showing up here together, sort of hanging out and having open discussions and asking questions and just sharing our, our experiences for about five years now, almost five years. And I'm so happy to be here with each and every one of you. Tonight we're going to specifically talk about healing. Excuse me, I had the hiccups right before I pressed the little like record button here. Um, we're going to talk about healing from abuse when that abuse that we endured was at the hands of someone we believe has uh, psychopathic tendencies or we believe lines up with the construct of psychopathy or someone who is diagnosed or undiagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which is um, also referred to as someone who's a sociopath and it, over in the description section of this video you'll see sort of a breakdown of what it is that we're talking about and how it is that we are going to sort of have this discussion so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna refer to some things that I have in the description section of this video and then I will also go over um, to the chat box and see how you all are doing, see how you're feeling, uh, see what's going on. And one second here. Let's see. I want to just um, really quickly remind each and every one of you that uh, YouTube is never a place for crisis support. We invite you to read the Turn on live chat if you're watching this on a replay and you can see a list of all of the different crisis support options. There's of course rain.org, R-A-I-N-N.org, there's samaritans.org, there's the crisis, crisis text line.org, there is the suicide prevention lifeline.org, there are tons of uh, different telephone numbers and websites that are being listed for you. In the, in the chat box right now. If you click on, on your screen on YouTube and you look for live chat, you'll be able to see all of those listed. Uh, if you're living with addiction, eating disorder, self-harm behavior, suicidality, if you're in a domestic violence situation, uh, whatever is your particular truth and what it is that you are going through, we have a resource listed for you. And we hope that you will benefit from being here with all of us. We have guidelines for everyone that, that shows up here. You know, we treat one another with mutual respect. We're not here to fix anyone. We're not here to judge anyone. We're here to receive and give compassionate, mutually respectful support. So if you believe that the person who abused you when you were a child was someone that had psychopathic traits, someone who lines up with the construct of psychopathy, or if you believe that they were living with the mental disorder, which is called antisocial personality disorder, also referred to as sociopathy or someone who has sociopathic tendencies, then this video might be helpful for you even if it's just to hang out with others who have been through something similar to what you've been through. 
you, I just want you to know you're not alone. And I'm grateful that you've chosen to be here. The videos on this channel are, are longer in nature. Um, if you like shorter videos, you, you can always go click on the website, uh, cptsdfoundation.org. You'll find the website in the about section of this, uh, of this YouTube channel. And you can um, click around. We lead. We have conversations like this on a daily basis, 365 days a year. Uh, not all. Not on the topic of psychopathy or uh, antisocial personality disorder, but always on the topic of healing from trauma, healing from complex trauma. Over on the website, you'll find a button that says calendar. You can look at all the different topics that we discuss. There are plenty of dates that we have that are just general Q&A. That means you can ask any question about anything regarding your healing journey. Any question you have, and we'll make sure that we answer that. We lead those calls 365 days a year. You can click around on the website and find out about that. Or, you know, we have a, a healing book club where we go through books together and we meet every week virtually on Saturdays. And, um, and that's a, a wonderful way to connect. I think it's only like $5 a month for the book club. It's $50 a month for the daily calls. And uh, they're not therapy. They're meant to be daily peer support, daily support for you, which is peer led. And that's just, you know, for between your therapy appointments, you know, just so you feel fully supported. So, um, Hopefully there's something that you can find that's helpful for you. And if the resources that you see are not for you, that's okay. There are hundreds and thousands of YouTube channels and you can click around and, and, and find something that will be helpful for you. That'll get you through wherever you're at right now. You're not alone. Okay. So um, if this video ends up being helpful for you, it would mean a lot to me if you would, uh, vote for it, either thumbs up or thumbs down. Either way, your vote counts. It matters. And if you're here listening to this or watching this on a replay and you want to leave a comment below saying hi or you know letting me know you're here, it means a lot to me that you guys take the time out to to be here on this channel. The, the more you either comment in the chat box while you're here live or leave a comment, below or vote for the video thumbs up or thumbs down it shows youtube that i'm i'm engaging people in a conversation that needs to be had and that helps me a lot it helps me in in a very real way so just thank you thank you for allowing me to be in your life thank you for being in my life and a special thank you to Poppy for being here week after week after week after week, year year after year, I believe, or at least a year or two, um, just helping and posting guidelines and helping moderate. And a special thank you to every single one of you who help us to make sure that nobody is abusive and you know deletes the comments that are inappropriate or or not appropriate. For, for the chat box and just thank you. Thank you for all you do. I really appreciate it a lot. Um, let's see here. So hello to Hunter. Hello to Poppy, John Harvey, Tabby Boss, Shannon, Jeffrey, Malta, JJ, Butterfly Mama, Ann. And Shanna and Aurora and Angela and Nexus and Billy and De Destiny and Pixie Painter. Who am I missing? <laughs> Hello, Martha. Hey, Declan. So good to see you. So good to see all of you. Who am I missing? Hello, Gadir.
Hey. Oh, I had a hard time reading it. It just the, the chat box just moves on its own. You know what I'm saying? It like just has a mind of its own and it just decides it's gonna go. Hey Ta I think I said hi to Tabby Ba. Who am I missing? So good to see you all. I think I got you all. Hey music man. Okay, so so there is down in the description section of the video. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so wonderful. So I'm going to be using the term ASPD or antisocial personality disorder. I'm going to be using that interchangeably with someone with sociopathic tendencies. Now keep in mind there are a lot of articles and things out there online which talk about psychopathy being a, like in air quotes, worse version of sociopathy or, and, or ASPD. And what they're saying about worse, like they're saying that it's not as severe um, what they're saying is people with psychopathy don't have an ability to build a bond with with people and that I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but they're basically saying that people who are sociopathic, they're not as careless and they tend to blend in better and they have, my voice goes in and out and then I have these coughing fits. So hold on, let me just take a drink so that I don't have another coughing fit. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. So a lot of the, the people online and just things that you read, they talk about how, how psychopathy is like a, a worse or more severe version of, so, of someone that who is considered a sociopath and how, the traits are interchangeable and that, you know, not all psychopaths are a sociopath or, or all, all sociopaths are not necessarily psychopathic, but all people who are psychopathic are sociopath. So there's all this conflicting and complementary information. So what I've done is I've listed uh, just you know, I read, I've read several books. There's one that's really in layman's terms, and it's a very supportive, encouraging book, and it's by a gentleman by the name of Jackson McKenzie. Um, and it was just, just such a breath of fresh air, right? Like, and there was a link. I thought I put a link to an interview with Jackson McKenzie. Oh, I thought I had the link there. I didn't have, I didn't put the link. It was from his publisher, Penguin Random House. Anyway, the book is very encouraging. And um, it really gives a lot of hope to people who have been in emotionally abusive and otherwise abusive relationships. And then one of the YouTubers his name's Dr. Todd Grande. Uh, there's a link to his his YouTube video on the differences between uh, the construct of psychopathy and then antisocial personality disorder. So I really encourage you to watch that video at some point. And then there's one particular article that I found on Google Scholar. Um, it was actually from Poppy, I thought of you. It was an article titled Disentangling Psychopathy from Antisocial Personality Disorder, and it was an Australian analysis. And it was this article that was published in the Journal of Forensic Psychology Practice, which is a pretty big medical journal. And the contributors were uh, J.R.P. Ogloff and R.E. Campbell and S.M. Shepard. 
and um, yeah, it, it was basically the relationship between psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder. They explored it really in depth. Um, there was like 136 people in Australia and uh, they studied them and they gave them both. There are these different tests, right? There are these tests for people that are, they're not self self tests where you, you go and you take a quiz for, you know, for you, they're actually administered by doctors. And one of them is called the, the PCLR and one of them is called the PCLSV. And again, those are administered by doctors, but they studied their sample size was 136 people, which is actually a really good sample size, especially for something like this. And one of them is called the psychopathy checklist revised. And then the other one is the psychopathy checklist screening version. Um, and these were people, this isn't the general public, right? Uh, um, I don't believe that this is something where they, they were just, you know, random people. These are, they participated and it was a, in a, a secure forensic psychiatric inpatient facility. So these are people that are, that are in the system, right? And the results of this analysis that they did and the comparing and contrasting of psychopathy versus antisocial personality disorder, there were, there were clear distinctions between the measurements of psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder. And then their findings, and, and it's, I mean, it's like, I don't know, dozens of pages long, but basically in the abstract, you, you can read the abstract online um, or on ResearchGate, if you guys are members of ResearchGate. Over 65% of patients high in psychopathic traits received a diagnosis of also antisocial personality disorder. So a huge percentage of people who were psychopathic were also sociopathic, while only 5% of the patients that were considered to be sociopathic or antisocial were high in psychopathic traits. So again, all, a lot of, not all, because I can't say all, but a huge percentage of the psychopaths were also antisocial, but a lower percentage of the people who were antisocial were also psychopaths. Uh, and it's it, like it says in the abstract, which is denoting an asymmetric relationship, meaning that these, they're not identical constructs. Like you can't use the word psychopath and sociopath interchangeably and, and, and actually have it mean the same thing. They're not the same thing. Okay. So while there is a lot of information online that says that people who are, who are psychopathic are, are worse in air quotes or sicker or more, uh, more disturbed than people who are sociopathic or that sociopathy is a lesser version, that's just a very casual way of, of saying it and it's not necessarily accurate. So they talk a lot about like online, especially in medical journals, they like they talk a lot about how people who are sociopathic and have sociopathic tendencies that they, while they don't have remorse, if they are abusive towards strangers, they do, they can be more likely to have remorse when dealing with someone that they have a bond with, like someone that they love in air quotes or someone in their family or someone that they've bonded with. Now, I have vacillated back and forth with trying to pathologize and diagnose my own family members, which of course is just, it's just a huge ripoff. It, it's just a huge waste of my time. Like, it, first of all, it's not my job, right? Totally not my job to, uh, to diagnose my family. It's just not my job. 
would it make me feel better? Would it help me to have some closure? Would it help me to figure stuff out? Maybe, but it just ends up wasting a lot of my time. I mean, I have literally gone online and I've ordered, I've paid a lot of money to download and print out hundred page studies on psychopathic psych, psychopaths and uh, and the way that they parent children and the you know the the painful truth about parental psychopathy and all of this because I was it's almost like I'm like spending all this money that I don't have wasting all this time that I'll never get back looking for someone with all the letters after their name who wrote a paper that was peer reviewed and published in a medical journal telling me what I already know. So you do what you got to do, right? You do what you got to do to feel better. If you feel that you need to see in black and white that some doctor spent their, their time writing their thesis or working together with other doctors to write a paper on what you already know to be true within the context of your family, your family of origin, of what you lived through, by all means do it if you feel like it's going to make you feel better. I'm simply telling you that from my own personal experience, I spent a whole bunch of money that I shouldn't have spent and wasted a whole bunch of time that I'll never get back only to find out what I already knew to be true. And all that really matters is that you know your truth. You know what happened. And if you're looking for some sort of validation from someone who was abusive toward you, it is likely to never, ever, ever, ever come. Sadly. Sadly, it is likely. It is not likely that that day will ever come. Why? Because people who are psychopathic and sociopathic, they don't tend to spend a lot of time feeling remorse or, or feeling a need to validate anyone. It doesn't serve them. It doesn't suit them. It doesn't, it doesn't serve a purpose for them. So, I, I mean, I could tell you all day long to save your time and save your money. But I'll, uh, otherwise, I could just sit here and I could just say, I believe you. I know that you were young. I know that there are people who tell you that you can't possibly remember those things because you were too young. I know there are people who will tell you, you can't possibly remember what you remember. You didn't remember it at the time. You didn't remember it until you were 30. You didn't remember that until you were 40. You didn't remember that memory until you were 50. Don't you think you would have remembered that sooner? if it were real and if you're waiting around for an apology from someone it is not likely that you're going to get it and so I will just tell you right now that I am so 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 sorry that you live through what you live through you who are watching this video or listening right now whatever you have lived through whatever abuse you've lived through you didn't deserve it and whether or not the people in your family or whoever it was that abused you lines up with all of the different aspects of psychopathy or if they're diagnosed or undiagnosed antisocial personality disorder, whether or not any of that ever becomes true, I want you to know that I believe you and you never should have been treated that way. You didn't deserve it. You deserved love and kindness and affection and approval and safety and compassion you deserved someone to to put your artwork or your spelling test or your math problems up your 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 uh, math math quiz up on the refrigerator and you deserve someone to sit down and do finger paints with you and you deserve someone to teach you how to cook in the kitchen or to bake cookies with you, or to teach you how to brush your teeth, or how to comb your hair, or how to wash your clothing, or how to, how to start a bank account, how to save your money, 
how to have a paper route or make make yourself a lemonade stand or how to how to take care of your pet or how to go shopping for someone who's having a birthday and how to wrap a how, how to wrap a present so you can go to a birthday party or someone to teach you how to swim or someone to teach you how to fly a kite or how to ride your bicycle you know, you deserved all these things. You deserve someone to mentor you and to be a role model and to teach you that it's okay to, to cry and it's okay to, to do all the things that, that kids need to learn how to do. You deserved all that. And if you didn't get any of those things or you didn't have anybody to create a safe space for you when you were growing up and they didn't tuck you in at night and you didn't feel loved and approved of and you didn't have people who were kind to you and and all the things I want you to know that you deserved it and that you really should have had those things and if you didn't have those things and in addition to not having those things you had someone who lacked empathy and lacked remorse and was very calculated and sadistic and unkind and basically tortured you whether it was emotionally verbally physically or otherwise I want you to know that you didn't deserve that either regardless of what they've been diagnosed with or not you deserved more you deserved better you deserved love and kindness and even if you feel like you're never gonna heal I promise you that each step you take forward on your healing journey you're going to make it farther and farther and farther and you're going to feel better and you're going to accomplish more and the pain gets less over time and on days when the pain is not less than what you wish it was just know that just showing up for yourself doing something like this where you're hanging out with other people who have been through what you've been through you know whether it's showing up here on Monday nights 6 p.m. Pacific 9 p.m. Eastern with all of us we've been doing it every week almost every week for almost five years many of us have, have been here since the very beginning and whatever it is that you do for you just do something and be extra kind to yourself today just something and just know that the pain over time it will get a little bit more bearable and you will gain new skills you'll learn all those life lessons and the life skills that weren't that you weren't taught and I can't say your life's gonna be amazing and perfect and everything you hoped it would but you will create a life that you enjoy the more you show up for yourself and practice self-care and self-compassion and be really mindful of the way you talk to yourself in your head because the way you talk to yourself really does matter. The moment you hear yourself talking to yourself the way that abusive, psychopathic, antisocial people were talking to you, just pause, just stop and, and, and just say to yourself out loud or in your head, that's not my voice, that's not the truth. Just, just stop what you're doing. That's not my voice. That's not the truth. I don't deserve that. No. Okay. So I hope that's helpful for someone. And just know that I care and I believe you and I'm glad that you're here. Billy Hawkins was asking uh, a little a little bit ago. Billy Billy says, I met with a family member recently who would go into psychosis but doesn't remember much of the depth of abuse how is best to deal with this with them to bring healing so I guess the the place we should start with this question great question Billy so the definition of psychosis right if you're looking at like an online dictionary or if you have a paper dictionary psychosis is a severe mental disorder or phenomena in which thought your thoughts and your emotions are so impaired that contact with reality is lost 
right? We lose contact with, with, with reality. And, and it's as a result of feeling emotionally overwhelmed or impaired. And this could be as a result of specific memories of abuse or just as part of dissociation, right? Because dissociation and psychosis, they can go hand in hand. When we dissociate, we either leave our body, which is also losing touch with external reality, or we sort of are able to experience reality outside of ourselves as though we're sort of looking down at ourselves or things are sort of foggy or, or blurry. You, you have this feeling of being unreal, right? So of course you, you're losing contact with reality because you feel unreal or you feel like you're not present in your body. So psychosis and dissociation go hand in hand and just know that, 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 you can heal, right? I personally experienced psychosis and dissociation. I was having audible hallucinations. I had a visible hallucination, a visual hallucination. And I thought for sure I was going to have to like put myself into an inpatient facility. It was so, I mean, Gosh, this was right around January of 2014, right before I started this YouTube channel. I mean, I was only a year into my like online journey of, you know, starting a business online, deciding that I was going to, you know, build a website, have a blog and sort of, you know, move away from doing the brick and mortar business that I had here where I was living. I was running a business development company and I was, you know, learning a lot online. And what triggered this psychosis, what triggered this episode of dissociation, what triggered this, these hallucinations, it was a myriad of different things coming at me from different angles, all of them related to my family of origin. I had received an email from one of my abusers. I had received a phone call from one of my abusers. I was one of my abusers. I had received a text message from one of my abusers, and I had received a package in the mail from one of my abusers. And it was all this attempt of these people trying to to get at me, and it was just too much. Now I didn't have to 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 refer back to Billy Hawkins' question. I wasn't remembering much of the abuse in depth at that point, right? But these were stressors. These were external stressors in addition to my internal stressors. And so I would say in response to your question of how is best to, to deal with this with, with the family member so that they can experience healing, I would encourage them to seek out a trauma-informed professional online like you can go on psychology today or psych central or good therapy and you can type in your zip code or you can even go to the my foundation website i started a foundation for abuse survivors go to cptsdfoundation.org poppy has the link over in the chat box poppy has the link it's https like sam colon forward slash forward slash cptsdfoundation.org and you can fill out a contact form and it'll ask you what it is you need and just let them know you're looking for local resources you're looking for trauma-informed practitioners in your local area and we have a research intern that's volunteering with us who's looking into helping our community find local resources where they can find local help, where they can get a trauma-informed therapist nearby where they are. And you can also look for group therapy um, on those websites or, you know, let, let us know on the website that you're looking for, you know, perhaps group therapy as well. It's just important that it's trauma-informed so that when you talk about things like psychosis and dissociation and childhood trauma and abuse and, and all this, that they, that they don't 
minimize you and tell you basically that you need to forgive and forget and you need to move on and that what's in the past is in the past and blah 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 like all that is is going to re-traumatize you or Billy your family member so one of the best things Billy that you can tell your family member that's experiencing this psychosis or this dissociation or whatever it is that's going on and they don't have in-depth memories of their abuse I would let them know that abuse this is very very simple Billy abuse memories reveal themselves when the brain believes that we are safe so when my brain could feel safe or you know as per Winnicott slash Pete Walker safe enough right safe enough meaning that my basic needs were, were being met and I wasn't experiencing any over or covert abuse I was safe enough my my memories started coming forward once I was able to create pockets of safety in my life I couldn't create pockets of safety in my life by myself I was never taught to no one ever taught me so in order for your family member and if, if your family member is a female then you know likely in their 20s or 30s they'll start to have some more memories if your family member is a male probably in 30s or 40s they'll start to have more memories but not until their subconscious feels safe the most important thing is for for us to feel safe because then our memories start to reveal themselves and then when we're working with a trauma-informed practitioner they can walk us through the best ways where we can feel validated and feel like we're not crazy and experience you know a destigmatizing of what's going on right because the worst thing is going to be for us to feel stigmatized and us to feel like we're never going to heal so I promise you that's not the case it's not that you're never it's not that you you or your loved one is never going to heal what's happening is this is just a, a point in time that your loved one Billy is experiencing not necessarily a traumatic break with reality but like a crack in the surface so that the light can pour in and if there's a crack in the surface where the light can pour in coupled with safety internal and external safety right then then our memories will start to reveal themselves over time journaling is absolutely imperative I know no one wants to hear that they need to be journaling but journaling helps Jour journaling helps because you're so in the moment you're so fully present when you're journaling and even if you're not fully present even if it's more of a stream of consciousness situation it's okay the important thing is that you get it out the important thing is that we get it out into the open so that our fears aren't living in the dark recesses of our mind and just remember it's not a weak thing to need help I was so under the impression that my family was right my whole life and that it was a weak a weak thing a sign of weakness for me to need help like external help and for me to need to go to therapy and you know I thought it was just um, I don't know like I couldn't deal with it by myself and since my family of origin had you know like they played such a role in me feeling perpetually unfixable and broken and wrong and when I first started journaling all I could think about is like why am I even journaling all this stuff this is all depressing horrible stuff and I was so frustrated and I felt so just shameful about it and it wasn't until 
I started working with a therapist that it wasn't just about journaling just for journaling's sake. There was a method and there was there needs to be validation and love and safety and there needs to be affirmation and confirmation and and a sense of of being able to create pockets of safety for yourself. So um, that's not always something that we experience right away when we first start journaling. So please don't give up on it yet, right? There's different ways to journal. There's stream of consciousness. There's non-dominant hand. There's art journaling. You know, there's working with a therapist on journal prompts. There's, you know, journaling, you know, five words and five words only. There's, you know, identity journaling, like talking about, you know, affirming our reality and like who we really are and, and who our identity, finding our identity in something other than our trauma and what we've been through. You know, it's not an easy thing, but I promise you, I promise you that over time, over time, it will be something which helps you. And helps you to feel better over time. It's not going to happen right away. You're going to hate it for a while. Kind of like going to the gym. No one wakes up and goes, I know what I want to do. I want to go sweat around a whole bunch of strangers who are going to be judging my body. I want to wear tight clothes and feel awkward. And, and then be in pain afterwards from using my muscles. That's what I want to do. No. <laughs> No, I don't know anybody who says those things to themselves. <laughs> but many of us wake up and think, gosh, I wish I had the energy to go for a walk. I always feel better when I go for a walk. Gosh, I wish I had like the confidence to wear workout clothes and go walk on the treadmill for an hour. I know I would feel better, but... Oh, it just feels so like scary and gosh, I, I just, I don't want, I, tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, <laughs> you know? So, um, so anyway, you all, I hope that, I hope this discussion has been, has been helpful in some way. Um, hello to Andrew. Hello to Jeffrey. Hello to Cheryl and Tracy. Hello, Miss Beachboxer. Hey, Miss Vi. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hey, Stacy. <laughs> Who am I missing? <laughs> It's so wonderful to see you all. <laughs> oh, much love to you too. So I think it's worth saying here. I'm going to, I'm going to grab the book. Hold on. I have this book psychopath free. Let me just grab it real quick. Okay. I'm going to read you something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Aww. Hey, Lance. So happy to see you. Aww. Oh, someone's cat likes my voice. Where, where did it go? I saw it. Hold on. <laughs> Martha's cat likes my voice. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people who don't like journaling. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I hated it for the first 10 years of my recovery journey. I feel like maybe if I would have embraced it during that first 10 years, I wouldn't have needed to contain. Oh, JJ says, I take journal notes in Notepad a lot. I save them and then rarely, rarely, if ever, look at them again. I know I do that also. I do that also. Like, I just need to get it out so that it's not living around inside, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I wanted, so this, this book, Psychopath Free, which I read in preparation for, um, for tonight's discussion, it's recovery from emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists, sociopaths, and other toxic people. And then, uh, Jackson McKenzie, the little note on the front of the book says, do you know a psychopath? Take the test inside. And there's like a, you know, inside the book here, there's a test to, to find out if in fact the person that you're, that you're, you're dealing with is in fact someone who is uh, psychopathic. So, um, and then uh, there's a lot of information on spotting toxic people. One of the most requested video topics that I get on this channel is people want me to help them to identify toxic people so that they can like be on the lookout so that they know what to look for, right? And so I found that to be extremely helpful in um, in this particular book. And then uh, it's broken up into different sections. The first section is called The Manufactured Soulmate. So it talks a lot about interpersonal romantic relationships. And I feel like that would be very helpful for many of us here on this channel because I know that many of you have shared with me that you're single and that you think you're going to be single forever as a result of an abusive relationship that you were in. So if that is you, you know, I, there's probably about 30 or 40 of you that have messaged me telling me that you're single and that you think you're always gonna be single as a result of a, of a toxic interpersonal romantic relationship or your inability to be able to, to know or find, uh, you know, locate those toxic qualities in time for it to like make a difference in your life. So, um, so I just, I want to encourage you. There's an entire section here in this book on the manufactured soulmate. And that's, you know, what they look for, what they do, you know, what to look out for, right? But it, the whole book starts off with helping us to spot toxic people. And then the next section of the book is the path to recovery. Like if you're recovering from a relationship with someone who is um, emotionally abusive and toxic, right? And then one of the first things that the author, Jackson McKenzie, addresses in this book um, is why does recovery take so long? And that's one of the questions I get the most, right? And then, interestingly enough, none of you here will be surprised because you know how often I talk about grief. There are two sections in this book as part of the recovery section talking about grief. Grieving is always what needs to happen, right? And it, Angela says, I've never had a good relationship. The few I've had have all been toxic. Yes, that was me. That was absolutely me, Angela. That was me until I was in my late 30s, like literally 37, 38 years old. 
I was pushing 40 before I ever experienced a good relationship in air quotes, like good enough relationship, right? So just know that you are absolutely not alone. Like, and it's never too late, right? It's never too late. In other news, we're talking about kale in the chat box and about how we need to cover it in gravy or dressing or ketchup. Mm. <laughs> you all are so awesome. I love you. We're talking about raw kale, cooked kale, fried kale, baked kale. I feel like Bubba Gump. <laughs> fried shrimp, shrimp creole, shrimp alfredo. <laughs> I put kale in smoothies. Yeah, it is never too late. So then there's an entire other uh, last section of the book titled Freedom. And it helps us to look back at what we've been through and, and move forward from what we've already been through, right? So, and then it talks a lot about introspection and insecurities or, you know, just emotional awareness, right? Just emotional literacy, being self-aware. And then he talks about self-respect in the book in a way that I think would be refreshing for many of us here on this channel. Um, you know, there's there's also, you know, he breaks, he breaks down uh, different 30 signs of strength, spirituality and love, the fool in the world, a bigger picture, um, you know, it, it would be it would be really a good idea for hey welcome David so happy you've chosen to be here hi Victoria hello welcome Jana um yeah it would be really helpful I think for for us here a lot of us um to to go through this book together perhaps so um so in the back of the book is where you'll find that uh the quiz the quiz that we talked about right So these are common phrases. These are common phrases that people say about psychopaths, okay? And I know we're about five minutes away from the end. So don't miss this, okay, guys? Don't miss this. Does any of this ring true for you? Eroded my boundaries. I groveled for forgiveness even though it was their fault. Chameleon could fit into any situation, creates drama. Abuse was subtle and covert, seemed amused at my worst. I begged for them. They stared blankly when I was hurt. My life becomes complete chaos and confusion. Mysterious childhood. Her father ignored them. Mommy issues, alcohol and addiction, no closure, sudden end. They gossiped about me. Control by hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming. Flirting, triangulating with everyone. They became my entire life and I was isolated. Invokes pity and sympathy. Word salad arguments made no sense. So in the back of the book here, there's all these different um, recommendations and articles. The psychopath test is toward the very end, I believe on page 273. And uh, and goes towards towards the end. So um, there are some Facebook groups and pages that he recommends. 
There's one, uh, the Empathy Trap book. There's one called Psychopath Free, Respites from Sociopathic Behavior, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Central. After Narcissistic Abuse, there is Light, Life, and Love. Um, and then uh, he lists, it says, there are many books written on the topic of psychopathy. Check out some of our favorites along with the most popular ones out there. Remember that not every resource will be right for you. Uh, so he lists Dangerous Liaisons by Claudia Moscovici, The Seducer by Claudia Moscovici, The Sociopath Next Door, I read that, Martha Stout, really good book, In Sheep's Clothing by George Simon, Women Who Love Psychopaths by Dr. Sandra L. Brown, How to Spot a Dangerous Man by Dr. Sandra L. Brown, both excellent books, Without Conscience by Robert Hare. Robert Hare, by the way, just so you know, he is, he's been around forever and has a lot of different published works like peer reviewed research. So he's super legit. And I believe that you all would just nerd out on his work. So he wrote a book called Without Conscience, which I have on audio book, by the way, highly recommend. Discarded by Indie Mom. The Survivor's Quest by Healing Journey. The Empathy Trap by Jane McGregor and Tim McGregor. And they're the ones who have the corresponding Facebook group. The Sociopath at the Breakfast Table by Jane McGregor and Tim McGregor. Out of the Fog by Gary Walters. The Smart Girl's Guide to Self-Care by Shahida Arabi. Love her. Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men by Lundy Bancroft. Snakes in Suits by Paul Babiak. Narcissistic Lovers by Cynthia Zane, The Wizard of Oz and Other Narcissists by Eleanor Payson, Help, I'm in Love with a Narcissist by Stephen Carter, What Makes Narcissists Tick by Kathy Krajko or Krako, Malignant Self-Love by Sam Vaknin and Love Fraud by Donna Anderson. And, uh, the author here, um, Jackson McKenzie, he says, for an extended collection of links, articles, and videos, please check out our master list and feel free to contribute any that we may have missed. And he lists his website, psychopathfree.com, which I highly recommend. I should add that to the, the description section of this video, actually. Um, Let's see here. Um, some search terms that people use when looking up uh, resources on psychopaths and people who live with antisocial personality disorder. They'll look for or Google the word. Um, like there's a lot of terms besides just the word psychopath that might yield some very helpful resources for you. And so some of the most common ones are obviously narcissist, sociopath, psychopath. Um, emotional vampire, cluster B personality disorders, psychopathology, covert abuse, narcissistic personality disorder or NPD, antisocial personality disorder, ASPD, borderline personality disorder, BPD, emotional manipulator, emotional rape, covert abuse, psychological maltreatment, emotional abuse, psychological abuse. Um, you can look up any of these phrases and, um, you know, you'll be able to find some resources that may be helpful for you, right? Um, and I think this is worth mentioning. Many of you will wonder why I mentioned this, but this is worth mentioning, okay? Let me... Um, So, how do I say this respectfully? One of the things I love about this author, there, this is my perspective and my perspective only, okay? One of the things I love about this particular author is that he had a very, very, very healthy, or healthy enough in air quotes and good and loving 
an inspiring relationship with his mother and his father. So before you check out and be like, that book will never apply to me, you know, they don't understand what it's like, they'll never know what it means to be me because I didn't have, you know, supportive, loving, kind, good enough parents. I believe that reading published works by people who have experienced something different than what we've experienced, I really believe it gives us a new perspective and it helps us to destigmatize what it is that we've gone through. Oftentimes we can roam around this world feeling uh, terminally special. We're in a perpetual state of snowflake and we feel like our trauma is so unique that no one in the whole world will ever understand it and that they've they would they've never experienced what we have experienced because because they you know had a good relationship with their parents but i'm here to tell you this book is so dead on so dead on and it is proof that Yes, Vi says it helps us not make everyone evil. It, it is proof that there are good people in the world, right? And even when you have a very supportive father who taught you things and a really kind-hearted, loving mother, you can still become the victim of someone who is a psychopath or a sociopath. Psychopaths and sociopaths are not a respecter of persons. Yes, our trauma and our abuse can predispose us to showing up in the world differently and we can be more easily targeted. But this gentleman here who wrote this book he writes from a lived experience perspective in such layman's terms, in such a wonderful, incredible way that helps you know that you're not alone. And yet, he had, uh, you know, a, a supportive family. And, you know, and, 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 and he's a cat lover for any of us here who are, you know, who are lover of, of the felines. He has uh, his, his kitties, uh, Mosey and, oh gosh, I forget the name of the other one, um, and Nelly. Anyway, you all, I just, I want you to know that finding resources that work for you is, is hard, but Healing is not impossible. Healing is not impossible. I promise. Okay. I don't know what else I could possibly say other than I highly recommend this this particular this particular book. Um Here, there, on page 54, here's a, here's something. Psychopaths always see themselves as victims, no matter how horribly they've treated someone else. Nothing is ever their fault. They've always been wronged in one way or another. To them, the problem is not their lying, cheating, stealing, and abuse. The problem is that you started to notice all of those things. Why couldn't you just remain happy with the idealization phase? How dare you betray them by standing up for yourself? Encounters with these people are like drowning in a black hole. Because no matter how much they hurt you, it'll still be your fault. Very well put. Um, I do think it's worth, uh, you know, mentioning that there are lots of different, you know, types of people who have, you know, traits, different psychopathic traits, right? Um, 
I'll read this one last thing, right? This is about uh, someone who is the, the serial provoker. They love to provoke you. My, uh, my father was this way tor towards the end of his life. And it breaks my heart to say that because, you know, he wasn't always this way. But serial provokers are experts at seeking out flexible, easygoing people. They exploit this quality by constantly provoking their target with covert jabs, minimization, veiled humor, and patronizing. The target will attempt to avoid conflict by remaining pleasant, choosing to forgive, and excusing their behavior in favor of maintaining harmony. But the serial provoker will continue to aggravate the target until they finally snap. And once this occurs, the provoker will sit back and they will feign surprise and they will marvel at how passive aggressive and angry and volatile you are. You will immediately feel bad, apologize and absorb all the blame. They are essentially shamed for rightfully losing their patience. We, we are essentially shamed for rightfully losing our patience and behaving the way that the serial provoker behaves every single day. The difference is the target, that's us, feels remorse. The serial provoker does not feel remorse. We are expected to remain calm and peaceful no matter what, while the serial provoker feels entitled to do whatever they please. Yeah. You guys, like, this is, this is a really, really, really excellent book that is written in such awesome layman's terms. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll add this to the list of book club. We have a, a book club. It's like $5 a month. And all the proceeds go to scholarship people in to help them receive daily support that they can't afford. So you can find the uh, book club information at uh, cptsdfoundation.org. Here, let me see. Book club. Uh, let me see. Oops. Foundation.org. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Vi says, if it's not one thing, it's your mother. <laughs> you all are so funny. I hope you all will be extra kind and gentle with yourselves. You deserve it. You really do. I will see you if you if you are not interested in in being a part of our daily calls. They happen every single day, 365 days a year. If that's not something you're able to do, you know, that's okay. I'm always going to be here every Monday, <laughs> 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's free, and I look forward to seeing you. So, um, be just be kind, be kind and gentle with yourselves. I'm sending each of you lots of love and a lot of gratitude to Shannon and Poppy for just for just being here and um you know just showing up and sharing your love and your kindness with so many people here. Really, really, really appreciate you. So um I'll see you when I see you. And again, just be extra kind and gentle with yourselves um, because you're worth it. And here we go. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to find this little emoji thing. Whoops, it won't really it won't really work. Oops. Oh, there we go. I was looking for my little my little mama bear. Oops. Oh, there we go. Yay, there we go. <laughs> Sending you all lots of love and I will see you next week if I don't see you sooner on the daily calls. Bye, everybody.